Hello and welcome into another edition of our Coaching Network Coaching Podcast. I am John Bryce of footballscoop.com. Excited to be joined by Corico Wright, assistant coach at Delaware. He coaches in the secondary and he's also the defensive pass game coordinator. Corico, thanks a lot for joining us on the podcast this week. Thanks for having me. What an unbelievable platform you guys have and I'm just happy to be a part of uh, something special. Well, we're excited to have you. Um, it's fun to have coaches of all ages on here, but it's really fun to have uh, some of the younger coaches on the, on here who are on the climb. And you and I were just visiting uh, off camera or, or before the record button got hit that we met several years ago at Furman when you were on staff there. And I was fortunate enough to be welcomed around by those guys from, from Clay Hendricks to George Quarles and, of course, Brian Bratton, the legend himself. So, um <laughs> Thanks a bunch for thanks a bunch for joining us, and, and we're going to jump around a lot, but let's start right there. I think you were at Furman okay. for four years, um, and, and obviously you're from the South. You played at Clemson. You're from Georgia. What do you take with you still today from those Furman days? Oh, man, what an unbelievable uh, place Greenville is, uh, and what an unbelievable uh, place Furman is. It's, uh, it's a special place, and um, Upstate is a place that we call, my wife and I call home. Spent a lot of time there as a player in, in the upstate area and as a graduate assistant. And we have a lot of family around the area. And uh, it was a uh, unbelievable experience there. We were able to help a lot of uh, kids get some degrees and, and win some football games in the process. And uh, one of the things that uh, I learned with my time at Furman is just that, you know, it's um, it's really and truly about just the the, the things that keep you winning. And that's taking care of the players. Uh, being a team first and uh, being balanced on offense and defense and, and understanding that that's the thing that ultimately helps you win games. And, and you referenced that you probably uh, are from one of the programs that, that best symbolizes that in big time college football, the family nature of Clemson. How much did your playing days before we jump back to you going back there to start your coaching career, but, but how much did your playing days maybe help form who you hope to become a, as a coach down the road? Oh man, what a what a great question! Clemson is an unbelievable place. It really is a, a place that uh, they focus on the holistic approach, the whole player on and off the football field, and that place molded me uh, and and took me in and, and made me the man that I am today. Uh, around some wonderful men on the coaching staff, around some wonderful players they assembled in the locker room, and just the community in Clemson is just a, a unbelievable place. There's no Shocked to me that Coach Sweeney and the staff has been successful as they've been up to this point and going to continue to be successful. And it was just an unbelievable experience. And, I mean, it was just on and off the field. And I, it, we all knew well, while we was there that it was only a matter of time for this place uh, just blows up. And uh, along came Deshaun Washington and Trevor Lawrence and Sammy Watkins and some of those guys. And, and that led it. And it was just uh, – it's been, it's been on the rise since then. And I, I think you played with one of the original modern day legend Clemson quarterbacks and Taj Boyd. Is that right? Oh yeah. Uh, yeah shout out Taj Boyd. That guy was a baller. He sure was. Uh, we, we was coach when first uh, signing class, they called us the dandy dozen. And so uh, we came, we came to Clemson together and we was helping each other grow up. We was uh, doing laundry together, teaching each other all uh, different, different things. And, uh, he, he, he really, really did a phenomenal job at Clemson and, and helping us uh, still to deal with some of the guys like Sammy and Martavis Bryant and, 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 um, and some of those guys that came along uh, while we was there. The dandy does. And I like that. I had, uh, I'd forgotten that, but I actually knew Taj during the recruiting process and he was committed to Tennessee for a really long time, along with Morgan Moses. And then Tennessee had the transition from Philip Fulmer to uh, Lane Kiffin and Lane went a different direction and, and Morgan ended up at UVA and Taj ended up at uh, Clemson, obviously. And both those guys did huge things and, and Lane ended up having to reboot his career, but that's a, that's another story for another yeah. day. It worked out, worked out really well for Clemson as it turned out. Did. Taj Boyd. Uh, I told Very you good. that I wasn't going to prep you too much and that I was, but I was going to ask one fun question. We're getting to it earlier than I thought, but you just, talked about learning to do laundry. You talked about being part of that dandy dozen initial class for Dabo. So if your playing day was today, what NIL deal would you have or would you be going after? Who who would be jumping at the chance to sign up and be uh, associated with Carico Wright? That's a great question. I don't have an answer for you. Uh, I know I'll just be uh, happy with whoever 
uh, wants to do business with me and uh, just go from there. You know, that NIL space is different. You just never know who's watching, whoever. You know, you just never know who is um, attracted to you for whatever reason. And, you know, at a place like Clemson, you'll be able to have all those things um, lined up for you. So that, that's a good question. <laughs> All right. Um, well, for me, I, w- I wouldn't be good enough, but I'd be begging Hall's Chop House for an NIL deal. So um, big, big hey, Hall's it. Chop House guy there in uh, Greenville, as well as the original in Charleston, which is where I ate on my wedding night. So um, I, oh, got yeah. some, I got some South Carolina history as well there, Coach. I was going to say, if, if Hall's is a, is a really good place if you're in South Carolina in Charleston or the upstate area. That's a That's a good place to have a steak dinner. When did you know, did you know as a player, and, and you were a really good player, had 150 tackles combined in your sophomore and junior years. You were uh, also uh, excelled in the classroom, I think academic all ACC. When did you know rather than playing, you would go down the path of coaching? I believe it was my sophomore year. I was talking to uh, player personnel, uh, Jeff Davis, who's in the uh, Clemson Hall of Fame, uh, name is in the stadium, unbelievable uh, husband, father, and he and I was having a conversation. We was talking about uh, next steps after football. And he asked me what I love. And I told him that I love football. He asked me, have I ever thought about coaching? And at that point in time, I was, had said no. And later on that day, I went home and thought more about it. And I was like, well, maybe I should look hard at that. And he encouraged me when I came up with an answer. Now, if it was to coach, go share with Coach Sweeney that, that's something that I want to do and why not start at a place like Clemson. And so that spring in my exit meeting, I felt led to tell coach Sweet that I wanted to coach. And he was like, really? I'm like, yeah. And he said, you know what? I'll hire you right now. I'm like, whoa, this went differently than what I thought it would be. Like, is he, is he, is he playing with me right now? And so sure enough, after I got done playing, he said, Hey, I got this spot for you. Do you want it? And I'm like, uh, I'm still trying to play right now. I don't know. And he was like, well, listen, you figured it out. You called me and let me know. But I won't give it to anybody until you tell me what you want to do. And so that's how I got started in the coach profession. And um, the whole while I was doing, I was kind of like, should I go do something else when my phone ring for a call or what what it may be? But obviously my phone never rang. Here I am still coaching. And so – uh, I appreciate Jeff for encouraging me to do that, but I also appreciate Coach Sweeney for allowing me to be a part of his staff and and being a man of his word. Uh, so that was uh, that was how I got started. Well, maybe it's not uh, your phone didn't ring to play, but it's it's done a lot of ringing as a coach. You've had a, a really strong uh, start to your career, first decade or so to your career here. We referenced Furman. You obviously had, I think, three seasons at your alma mater, Clemson. Uh, James Madison, now you're at Delaware. Take us through your coaching journey a little bit. Oh, I forget Murray State. Uh, just yeah. take us through your coaching journey a little bit and maybe uh, what are some of the things you've brought from all of those places that you carry with you today at Delaware? Yeah, you can't forget about Murray. Uh, it was funny because 20, uh, 2016 we left, uh, we leave uh, Arizona. That's when Alabama kicked the blue kick. We lose in the national championship game and I go on to coach at Murray State shortly after that. And what a unbelievable experience that was. I come from plane rides uh, <laughs> all over the country to uh, Murray State. and But I, I knew that's what I had to do. I knew I had to leave Clemson. I knew I had to go coach. Woody McCorvey, who's on that staff, told me that, like, hey, man, you have to leave this place to go recruit, go develop uh, your coaching style, your philosophy, relationships in this profession. That would be great for you. So I knew I had to do it. I did not know it was going to be at Murray State. That was the first opportunity that came. So I went forward and I spent two seasons there. Uh, Mitch Drew was the head coach. Chris Boone uh, was my D coordinator there at the time. And from there, I went to James Madison. As we know, we talked about Furman and now at Delaware. But all those places, the, the thing that always stood out to me was the importance of the players and serving their hearts and not their talents. It was the biggest thing that stood out to me uh, through my coaching journey this uh, thus far. And so that's something that I've always taken from these places. And I've always tried to implement wherever I've been and just making sure that I serve the players and the wins and losses to take care of yourself. And it's about impact more than it is about all the other things that surround the college athletics today. What a, what a great answer and what a great anecdote about Murray State. And a little bit of a segue here, we're doing our series of football scoop on all the new first year FCS coaches 
uh, first year FCS head coaches and Murray State has a new one in Jody Wright, who's got some ties to the deep south as well. And I actually just talked to him this week for that story. And then Woody McCorvey's a legend. I knew him a little bit when I covered the University of Tennessee and he helped the Vols win their 1998 national championship. So it's fun to get on these podcasts and sh what I call shrink the world with these coaches. And you are Corico Wright from Delaware. I'm John Bryce from Football Scoop. Um, you talk about that journey to Murray State. You talk about bringing stuff along the way with you. Um, tell us about your journey after Murray State to JMU and then to Furman uh, before getting there to Delaware. So I did not know anybody on James Madison staff uh, Mike Reed, who's the DB coach at Clemson, uh, knew Mike Houston from his time at NC State. And he reached out to Coach Reed asking for names. And Coach Reed gave him my name. I did the interview, got the job. That year, we do well. Mike Houston leaves and goes to uh, East Carolina. And I was uh, in hopes of staying at James Madison. That some stuff, staff things went on there. I had an opportunity to go to Furman. Uh, I knew all about the the Furman uh, brand and what type of ball they play and just being in the upstate, being closer to home is something that I wanted. Spent four years there. And after we uh, played uh, in Cardinal Ward in the playoffs, it was I knew that it was time to to go do something else, go experience something a little bit different. As, as we know, the landscape of college football is changing and and you have to associate yourself to stay with the times, if you will, and stay on, on things that are, are relevant to winning. And so I, I knew that it was a, um, it was time for me to leave and this Delaware thing came about. And uh, once I got here and started seeing her um, touring the places and seeing the facilities and meet with the coaching staffs and the coach staff here and everybody, the energy that I felt, the leadership here, uh, starting with our AD who just won national AD of the year, uh, head coach, coach Ryan Cardi and the way he leads his program and what he does on the offense was just super attractive to me along with Manny Rojas and what uh, we do on defense. Um, the three high uh, life is what we call it. Uh, similar to NC State, Kansas State, Iowa State is what we do defensively. And so those things were super attractive to me in the process. And I, I uh, my wife and I, we were fired up to come here and, and see and, and get them moving around Newark, Delaware. I was like, well, this place is unbelievable. It's beautiful. Like if you haven't been to Delaware, you don't know how beautiful that area of the country is. It's impressive. You once again, uh, maybe you should have my job because you're leading me right into another question. I was getting ready to ask you about Coach Cardi and about Delaware. Um, it's not just a, an energy and a vibe there now, but it's a program accustomed to winning, a program with great fan support. You playing in the SEC uh, at Clemson, being from Georgia. How how much did that make the job appeal to you uh, even more? Because you know um, it's not just a great opportunity on the field, but there's great support off the field. You're, you're right, John, in, in, in terms of the alignment is what you're really speaking of. And that alignment I felt here in my experience at Clemson, I saw the alignment every day with Coach Sweeney and the athletic department there. And so those I knew it's just it's one of those things where you're around something for so long you just deeply desire it and you just you can't put it in words but you know what it feels like you know what it looks like and when you see that you just instantly gravitate to that and that's what I felt here at University of Delaware and and that's ultimately why me and my wife and I made the decision to come here and be a part of this because we knew we knew uh, what this place uh, was going to be like we're going to Conference USA so our program is continuously moving we're doing some uh, wonderful things here from a facility standpoint and you know, we're, we're looking forward to this upcoming seasons and, you know, the best is yet to come for us here at Delaware. You've, uh, as we noted, he is Carrico Wright from Delaware, and you've added that defensive pass game coordinator title to you there as you've grown in your career. Again, I'm John Bryce from Football Scoop. Uh, what, what are some career aspirations for you? Because uh, you don't achieve at a high level the way you did as a player and have as a coach without having a vision with and without having a drive. So so what do you envision for your career moving forward? What are some things you hope to accomplish? Yeah, so I aspire to go through the process first and foremost uh, because you don't want to miss steps. It's like any CEO who starts his business at the ground level or her business at the ground level and they end up running a multi-million dollar company. And so I like to take the same approach in the coach profession. You know, I left Clemson to go be a uh, position coach and through the course of me being a position coach, I have been fortunate enough to gain the title of pass game coordinator. What this leads to 
who knows? Uh, you know, obviously we got to win. We got to do very well, but at the same time, I got to do a good job of uh, staying up on the new schemes, the new way to defend uh, offenses from a passing standpoint and just a defense standpoint. Um, period. But also, you know, I will love an opportunity to be a D coordinator one day, and I will love the opportunity to be a head coach one day. Those are the things that I aspire to do, and that's at the collegiate level or the professional level. It is something that I aspire to do and. You know, at the end of the day, if if that's you know for me, then that would be for me. But the worst thing is if you don't ever think about it, you don't ever prepare for those opportunities, then do you really want it? So um, that's what I aspire to be uh, in the future here, D coordinator, head coach. You've uh, referenced your wife a couple of times. You're a smart man, um, but but it's hard to it's hard to climb in, in this career without having somebody uh, behind you as your rock and as your support. How did you guys meet? How do you guys, uh, you've already referenced, you know, hashing out these decisions together, but but give us a little insight on that, if you could, how you met, how long you've been married, and, and what it, what it's like for her and having her support. So we've been married four years, and her support means everything. Like most coaches, you cannot do this profession without having a rock star at home, and she is definitely that, and uh, man, I am fortunate. I am blessed to have a wife uh, like her. We met at Clemson, just like most people who go to college, you meet your wife. So that's another reason why Clemson is a special place to me and us, because that's where we met. And so uh, I, I just can't say enough about her and what she means to me and our family and the sacrifice she made for me to chase my dreams and to to pour in these these other kids who you come about in recruiting or guys, if you take a job that are there, you got to pour into them. You got to, you got to make them yours. And so that's what we've always done where we've, wherever we've been. And, and that's just something that she allows me to do. If it wasn't for her at home, uh, it, it, it wouldn't be possible without her. So I am very fortunate and blessed to have her. And uh, I would like to think she's very fortunate and blessed to have me as well. We're not going to leave that out, but uh, like we, we, we're, we're an awesome team for sure. Um, I like that. We won't keep you much longer here. You're in the middle of training camp and somehow uh, finding time to to visit with us here on the Our Coaching Network podcast. So that already speaks to your time management skills. Um, it's year two for you at Delaware. Um, what can we expect uh, from the Delaware Blue Hens this year? You're going to expect, I, I expect for um, us to do exactly what we've been all been doing. I'll continue to uh, wear the Delaware logo with pride, continue to put a good product on the field, continue to be um, explosive and aggressive on offense and defense and, and put our best foot forward. Like I mentioned earlier, it's going to be our last year in the CAA, and we want to we want to do a good job. We want to go out and compete as hard as we possibly can and, and, and week in and week out, uh, try to go get a W. Um, you can see our players uh, having a lot of fun, having a lot of energy and effort on the football field and just making the Blue Hand faithful proud to – to say that's my team is ultimately what we're going to try to do and and uh you know leave a leave a lasting pressure for everybody uh moving forward i think this is probably my last question unless you answer it You're so fine. i'll end up You're asking fine. another one but, uh, <laughs> again carico Wright from delaware john bryce from football scoop this is the our coaching network podcast all right carico um, you're a Clemson guy. We've talked about it a lot. Tony Elliott's at Virginia, another Clemson guy. Brent Venables, deep Clemson roots at Clemson. Obviously, Dabo Sweeney rolling and has the Clemson machine rolling, has assistants everywhere. Chancey Stuckey, I think one of the best wide receivers coaches in the country, been at Baylor and Notre Dame in recent years. What kind of pride is there in that Clemson coaching fraternity that now stretches around the country? How often do you guys maybe talk or do you have an ongoing group thread, group text message, anything like that? Yeah, the communication lines are open uh, for everybody. Like, we're open book. We know what that place is and what that place has done for all of us in our careers as players and as coaches. And so Coach Sweeney has a big, humongous sign in the indoor that says best is the standard. You've probably seen it on shirts. You've probably seen it on a lot of things associated with Clemson. So it's up, it's up to us to give our best. And we're going to put our best foot forward because we know that giving your best is ultimately – all that you can do. And once you give your best, if you come up a little bit short, you know that you gave your all so you can live with the results and you can lay your head down at night knowing that I put my best foot forward. So for all of us, um, speaking for all of us, it is probably uh, best at the standard, just putting forth uh, our best effort in everything that we do and being the best versions of ourselves for these kids. That's awesome. I've, I've got the NIL deal for you now. 
Rico, you should have had a podcast because I wouldn't have a job or I wouldn't have this opportunity if you'd have started your podcast 12 years ago when you were finishing up at, at Clemson. So once again, NIL, no, NIL too late. You got you got ripped off on that one, buddy. No, but, no, no. You guys uh, you guys are doing a phenomenal job. And it's always some really good coaches on here and talking and speaking and sharing knowledge. And uh, this platform is unbelievable for guys like myself and, and coaches, period. So uh, hats off to you guys. You guys got to figure it figured out. Thanks a bunch, man. Well, we're fortunate that uh, people like you give us time and you talk about the good coaches. You're one of the really good young rising defensive coaches, secondary guys in the country. Carico Wright from Delaware. Thanks so much for the time. I'm John Bryce from Football Scoop. This has been the Our Coaching Network podcast. Thanks, John. I really appreciate it.